Good evening to everybody and thank you so much for coming along this evening to the 40, is it, it's the 48th, the 48th annual meeting of the Australian Conservation Foundation. Just look at the events of the last few weeks. Here we had our Prime Minister come out with his environmental plan. Now you've got to keep the laughter until I tell you. The so-called direct action plan. Now, um, that was presented as uh, something that was going to take our nation into the forefront, according to the Prime Minister and the Minister of uh, Environmental Action in the World. But regrettably for those persons, shortly after that we had the release of the IPCC report, the United Nations report, summarising and, and elaborating on uh, the development of climate science and its, and its applications for safe climate and for the lives of people all around the world. And then shortly after that, we had the announcement of the remarkable agreement between the United States and China. And then shortly after that, we had that great speech from President Obama. I don't know how many of you saw it at uh, Queensland University, and it was a fine speech. And even though people are now trying to tear it down and tear that agreement down and pick at the edges, uh, I was talking uh, last week to the head of the United Nations Environmental Initiative, and he said to me, um, no matter what anyone says about that agreement, it has changed the debate. This country can no longer come out and say uh, that we are leading the world, uh, uh, or nor can it say that we're waiting for other people to lead, as we did before that. Both those statements have now been given the lie, and I think there's a wonderful opportunity for this organisation to develop its leadership role and the council of this organisation, even prior to those events, had decided that a new path was required for the ACF. For a lot of the history of this organisation, uh, it was remarkably effective in treading the corridors of Canberra, of presenting reasoned argument based on economics, based on science, and affecting change in that way. But your council has looked at these things and said, that's not going to work anymore. We have to look at a new path, or better, a new road, something more substantial than a path, something solid with a, with a base, and we have to take these debates to the people of Australia uh, because the politicians aren't going to, aren't going to pick it up. And, and that's the challenge that we've got. But it's, it's not just a challenge, it's an incredible opportunity, I believe. And we're going to do that in different ways. And we're going to do it with whatever is needed. If we need to go out and individually name the politicians who fail and point out why they fail, so be it. We'll do it. And that will be a different thing for us. And we started that a little bit with our commentary on direct action. But if we need to work our way down from the Prime Minister to the Minister to anybody else who fails to carry out their duties in, in, in politics in this regard, then we will do it. If we need to go into the boardrooms of the major corporations in this country and put to them that they are failing in their duties. If we need to go to their shareholders, if we need to go to their customers, so be it. We will do it. If we need to name and shame the biggest polluters in this country, by name, and their directors, and where their pollution originates from and how they could correct and stop it, well, we'll do that too, so be it. We are not going to allow 
our political leaders to fail us in this regard and if we have to call them to account and if we have to call our business leaders to account and if I have to go into those boardrooms and use up the last shred of uh, credibility that I have left in the business community, well too bad, so be it, we'll do that too. What we are talking about here is no more and no less than, than making the world safe. Uh, that's what we're talking about. And when President Obama, uh, in, in what I, I thought was a remarkable speech, he tried to draw analogies that he thought would resonate with the Australian population. He spoke about the Barrier Reef. He said he wanted his children and his grandchildren to be able to see it. Well, my daughter's 42 years old. She's never seen it. My oldest grandson is 17 years old. He's never seen it. And there's an awful lot of Australians who'd like to get to see it before President Obama's children. And our job is to make sure that they do and that our grandchildren and our great-grandchildren do. But it's more than that. Because the, the old story of environmental groups, we're protecting this bit here, or we want to stop that mine there, or or, or this gas hub in the Kimberley or whatever it is, and I've been involved in some of those. It's not enough. It's just not enough anymore. Because we have to get the overarching narrative about safety, about safe climate. And we have to bring it home to people that this affects their lives right now. That if we don't remedy these issues, some people will die from the increase in world temperatures. Old people, very young people. These are real things. And when politicians come out and say, but look at jobs, do they not understand that in the best corporations in this country and in other places, those businesses have already changed their business models based on climate science, the insurance industry change the ratings of every insurance policy in this country based on different storm patterns, higher wind velocities and so on, change the pricing of all those policies to every homeowner in this country. Business and the average citizen are so far ahead of the government it just doesn't matter. And we've got to bring that home. And we've got to move beyond just protecting this little piece here or that little bit there. I'm not suggesting we won't get involved in those issues. Of course we will. But we'll always be trying to bring the broader narrative along with it. And the other thing we might have to do at some point is to try and bring home to people that maybe some of us need to change the way we live, the way we consume, the way we travel. Now, that's a tough message to put but if it needs to be put, so be it. We'll do it. We'll find a way. Now, this is not an easy road that we're heading down. And somebody's put it much better than I ever could. And the person who did that was a great poet called Robert Frost, American poet who was John F. Kennedy's favorite poet. He wrote the, a poem for Kennedy's inauguration, but he wrote a better one than that. And it was called The Road Not Taken. If my lovely wife was here, she would say, please don't try and <laughs> recite this poem, because you'll get halfway through and forget it. But I won't. Not tonight, I won't. Because it's such a wonderful expression of what, it, what it's required. The Road Not Taken by Robert Frost. Two roads diverged in a yellow wood. And sorry I couldn't travel both and be one traveller. Long I stood and looked down one until it bent in the undergrowth, then took the other, as just as fair and having perhaps a better claim because it was grassy and wanted wear. Though as for that, both that morning equally lay in leaves no step had trodden black. Oh, I kept the first for another day. Though knowing how way leads on to way, 
I doubt it if I should ever come back. I shall be telling this story somewhere with a sigh ages and ages hence. Two roads diverged in a wood, and I, I took the one less travelled by, and that has made all the difference. So, we're on the road less travelled, ladies and gentlemen and we need you to come with us and we need you to bring your families and your friends and your workmates and your colleagues and anyone you can think of sign them up as members we need to be able to go to the politicians and say look at what's happening to our supporter base looking look at what's happening to our membership they get frightened by things like that and it's good to frighten them now and again so please think about this we greatly appreciate your support. We appreciate you so much taking the time to come tonight. And if you do come down the road with us, and we do swell our numbers, and we do some of the things I'm talking about, I promise you, as the poet said, that will make all the difference. Thank you.